All right. So looking underneath the base, I can see that there's a cover here that pops off. Yeah, it looks like it's accessed to install the gantry. Yeah, we can see that there's four rubber feet on each corner and it appears that all of our electronics are under here as we do have some venting. And we can also see the two belts there for the y-axis so let's go ahead and assemble the printer as there's not too much to do here and should be quite simple so here they have a picture of all of the parts of the printer and what they do the parts list and skipping this unboxing part here i'm going to go to number five where it tells us to take off that back cover which we just did and number six here is installing the upper portion of the printer to the base and it looks like they're using the original foam which is quite interesting and you can do that if you want and on part seven we can see that we're going to be using the m5 bolts to go through the bottom there into the gantry actually guys let's go ahead and do the platform and i'm using the very bottom the next one up and then the third one the upper portion was sitting I believe it goes in just like this, kind of falls in there. So these are the bolts that we're going to need. They're the M518. Let's go ahead and grab our tools. So this is the pretty cool wrench that you put your bit in. And we're probably going to need the largest one, number four, like that. And we'll put a bolt on here and get ready to screw it in. So since this is laying down, the front would be up which is the part that has just the fins on here. And obviously we're gonna face it this way with the build plate going down onto the hot end. And so before we go into the motors, what we need to do is put our wires through. So hopefully you guys can see that. And now we can line it up. Make sure your wires are not getting pinched in there. And it does go in quite easy. Let's see, maybe I can flip this around a little bit here. But yeah, it just all kind of goes through and our wires are here. And now we can grab the bolts and there's one, two, three, four of them on each side. Uh, interesting detail, each bolt has some Loctite on it. It's quite nice. Won't unscrew that easy on its own. So yeah, very straightforward and quite simple here. Maybe a little tricky to line it all up, but if you use this foam like they suggest, it's actually not a big deal at all. Makes it very easy where it all kind of slides together. All right, so we got four in here. I didn't tighten them, I just kind of ran them down. Let's do this other side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this side up really good. Now you can flip the bit around and get a little more leverage but be careful not to you know go too hard on it just nice and snug and that's it for that side and now let's snug this side up all right so we installed our bolts now we're going to plug in our motors which you guys can see here there's a couple plugs it says r motor and that's for this side and that simply just plugs in there now make sure you line it up good and straight so you don't damage the pins but yeah that just simply plugs in there left and right motors so for the next part, we're going to be connecting the USB cables right under here, which is right here. Can't really see it, but yeah, this is the right and the left. And also, if you guys can see there, maybe there's some holes. We're going to need four M2.5 bolts, which are these right here. So it's a little bit hard to see, but maybe you guys can see there's plugs right here that these USB-C cables will plug into. So as you can see, the R will go on this side, so towards where it's coming from. And there's a big R also on the back of the panel. So yeah, simply just plug in. And then our wire here will route and clip in into these spaces. A little clip here, and then a little clip here. Same for the L. And now we can put the little four bolts in there so they don't unplug. To be honest, seems like a little bit of an overkill, but hey, it's better, you know, that all the connecting points are very secure as this printer does print really fast. And so there's probably gonna be a lot of vibrations and movement. And just like that, you guys can see those four bolts there. So now we need to put this cover back on and it simply just clips in just like that. That's that part. And the next part is the spool holder. And it looks like we have a couple options. We got option one and option two. So option one goes up and option two goes to the side. I do like the side better, I think, because it's a better access. But if you don't have as much room, you could mount it up also and it'll feed kind of down to the extruder here. So let's go ahead and stand it up. Move the foam. And this is what it looks like with the upper portion and the base connected. So our filament holder will go on the back. You guys can see we got the side option or the top option. So the side option will go like this with the spool holder facing to the front. And then the top would be the same just up here. And the four bolts we need are M412s with the two and a half bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna line it up and run it down here. So yeah guys, all of the pieces and quality here seems very nice as most of it is aluminum and does feel pretty heavy duty. All right.
and our spool holder is on and so we're pretty much done with the assembly yeah the next part we power on the printer and level the bed and then put filament in and start printing so yeah as you guys saw this is a pretty simple assembly and actually would be quite friendly for someone that's just getting started so let's go ahead and pull out this foam here another piece on the back so before we can do anything else, there's a couple things we need to check, which are going to be the rollers. So we have some rollers on the bed and also the hot end here. And the way the bed rolls is there's two rollers on each side. So two of them are stationary and the other two here are adjustable. They roll, it's kind of hard to see maybe, but on the outside. So it's not, you know, grabbing against something, but more like pushing away into the walls. So the rollers are rolling on the outward pressure. So yeah, and you can't really see, but you can kind of see the rails here where they ride. But to adjust them and to even check them, maybe you guys can see here. And it's going to be really hard to show you guys exactly what you need to do. But maybe here up front we can see the wheel a little easier here. But you can kind of stick your finger way deep in there and try to spin it. Yeah, they made it where it's really hard. So you kind of have to just go with the feel. And running the bed back and forth, I can tell you guys right now that it's way too tight. It's definitely got some jumps in it. And yeah, it just feels tight. So we're going to need to grab this wrench here. It's an 8 and 10 millimeter open-ended. And they are adjustable eccentric nuts right under there you guys can see that we can loosen and tighten and that's going to bring the roller farther and closer away so you just want barely any tension and i'm going to adjust the back one the same way and i do apologize guys that it's extremely hard to tell here what's going on but we need to do this part because we got to make sure that our bed is nice and smooth which that helped a lot already so there's still a little bit of unevenness i can kind of feel it and if you want to you can't loosen it to the point where it's just loose and wobbling around and then just as you wobble it slowly tighten it as it gets basically nice and straight and that should be probably pretty close but the bottom line is to adjust the rollers where they're not having so much tension and so mine feels really good i do feel a little bit of stepping here and there just a tiny bit and my guess is that is because the roller was under so much stress it probably is deformed a little bit so over time it should kind of go away as it runs around now if we flip around to the back on our hot end here we can see that we got two rollers on top of the channel and then one on the bottom and so here i'll be able to show you guys and explain a lot better of how to adjust this yeah if you guys can see these rollers on the top they're very hard to turn basically not turn them so this means it's way too tight and when i go back and forth i can feel stepping and bumping so it's definitely way too tight and so the adjustable eccentric nut is under here and these are two stationary so same way we're going to grab this wrench let's see if we can go up with this there we go so yeah same wrench i'm gonna grab it and loosen this one whichever way that is there we go so now it's too loose it's actually bouncing around so i need to tighten it up just a little bit so i'm going to keep tightening it until it starts to grab just a little and now i can spin my rollers pretty easily and it feels a bit smoother so i think it's a little tight maybe just a little looser there we go okay that's much better i can feel a little something there again that's probably the wheels being deformed as it was compressed so hard around the rail so yeah as this moves around that should go away so if you feel something really tiny it'll probably go away actually it's pretty much gone now so that's very smooth so yeah as you guys can see i can spin these really easy in one spot like a little burnout so that's the kind of drag you want so but not too loose obviously as this thing will bounce around so you don't want it to bounce around you just want it to be tight enough where it's holding on but not too loose so yeah hopefully that made sense and that's basically the same thing for the bed and the last thing we need to check is our belts and they are adjustable if you guys can see these two little screws here says 2.5 next to it which is the bit you're gonna need and so you can turn the screw to tighten the belt and loosen it so on mine they feel pretty good I'm gonna tighten them just a little bit again you don't want to tighten them too hard just slightly since there are two they don't need to be tight at all and it should feel nice and smooth and for the x-axis you guys can see the belt here in the back it is a little bit on the looser side and the adjustment screw is over here in the filament detector entry point there's a little screw here that we can turn to tighten the belt so yeah make sure you check those and adjust them on the X and the Y and so now we are done with the assembly so putting it together was quite simple and adjusting the rollers which was a little bit hard but overall not too bad it shouldn't be too hard for anyone to do